Hello, welcome to my channel, Bibbity Bobbity Books. My name is Ellie and I obviously enjoy reading uh, and I'm very new to booktube, but today I thought I would do a reading vlog. I thought it would be fun to film my experience of reading a thriller book for the first time because I have never read any thrillers. Um, I'm actually still fairly new to reading if I'm being honest with you. It's only really over the last year or so that I've gotten back into reading kind of during the lockdown and the pandemic and everything and I'm still kind of trying to figure out what my taste in books are but generally I tend to read a lot of sort of adult fantasy um, I also read sort of YA middle grade and I love all of those genres also a little bit of romance um, but as I say I've never read a thriller honestly because I am um, a little bit intimidated by the genre um, I do scare quite easily so I'm not sure how I will cope with the kind of more scary content um, but I'm hoping that I won't get too freaked out and that I'm not you know going to be up all night not able to sleep um, we shall see how it goes but yes I'm very intrigued by the genre I know lots of people love thriller books it's a very very popular um, type of book to read um, and I'm just you know interested to see what my thoughts are going to be so I've picked up this book so it's called The Family Upstairs and it's by Lisa Jewell. I have no idea if this is any good. Uh, as I said, I am very new to the thriller genre, so I don't really know, you know, what's good, what's not good, what I'm gonna like, what I'm not gonna like. But I saw this cover and I thought it looked like a very stereotypical thriller cover with the sort of dark background and the bold writing on there. Um, and I do recognize the author, Lisa Jewell. Um, I believe she has written quite a few thriller books, so I'm hoping that she will be a good author to start with. And I had a little flick through and the writing seems really easy to fall into and everything so I think this might be quite a quick read um, and quite a change of pace from what I've been reading recently so yes I'm excited to give it a go um, so I don't know a huge amount about this book to be honest um, it was quite an impulse buy <laughs> um, but I will give you a read of the blurb on the back so it says be careful who you let in in a large house in London's fashionable Chelsea a baby is awake in her cot well fed and cared for she's happily waiting for someone to pick her up in the kitchen lie three decomposing corpses close to them is a hastily scrawled note they've been dead for several days who's been looking after the baby and where did they go so that's all it says on the back here so I mean I'm intrigued I think it's going to be very very different and yeah let's see how I feel reading my first ever thriller novel. Um, let me know if you've got any recommendations for other thriller books, um, because I am, as I say, quite interested to get into this genre. Hopefully I like it, but we shall see. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go and hop into this book now and get started. Um, and then um, later on, my boyfriend and I are gonna watch the football. I don't normally watch football or any kind of sport, to be honest, but England are in the Euro final. So I feel like, you know, we need to watch it. We need to support England um, and get involved. So we're gonna watch that. I might have a few beers and things. And then it's probably gonna be an early night for me because tomorrow is the start of a new working week. But yes, um, I hope you enjoy this vlog and um, yeah, let's see how I feel reading my first ever thriller book. Two minutes in and England have scored. <laughs> oh, they're going to get complacent though. It's the start of dreams. <laughs> It's Monday, happy Monday everybody. So I had a lovely night last night. My boyfriend and I watched the football and I actually got really into it in the end. Um, I think I got quite carried away with the fact that it was the final and stuff and got quite invested. And England scored in the first two minutes, which was really exciting, um, but we did sadly end up losing. We lost to Italy, it went through to penalties and we lost. Um, but it was still a really fun game um, and uh, we had a really fun night and had a few beers and things and it was a good time. And I'm now settling down for the evening 
evening so I just wanted to check in with you. So yesterday I did actually manage to read the first 80 pages of my book. I actually sped through the first 80 pages pretty quickly although to be fair the text in here is really big so I feel like that's part of the reason why I'm so far through. But yes I'm intrigued. I wouldn't say I'm very very gripped I was hoping that I would be a bit more invested by now um, but I have found it quite slow to get into and I think part of the reason for that is because we're jumping between different perspectives in here and it feels a little bit all over the place and I'm still kind of trying to figure out what's going on basically. The first thing that I noticed in this book actually is how short the chapters are. Oh my goodness, they are so short. I don't know if that's a thriller book thing or if that's just a this book thing, but the chapters are literally so short. Like chapter 10, I think it is, is only like two pages long. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here we go. Look, chapter 10 is literally like two half pages long. It's so short, it's crazy. So we've got three different perspectives in here. The first perspective is Libby. So Libby is actually the baby that was found in the house. Um, so she is now all grown up, she was adopted, and at the beginning of the book she turns 25, and on her birthday she gets this letter and receives news that she is actually going to inherit the house that she was found in. So her biological parents left her the house. So this is obviously a huge shock because she didn't actually know much about her, her biological parents or about anything that happened before she was adopted. So this is a big shock. And she goes from kind of having a very ordinary job, a very kind of mundane, normal life, kind of living check by check, to suddenly owning this multi-million pound property in Chelsea, London. So that's a massive change. And when she kind of... Um, receives news about the house, she starts to uncover a little bit more about her past and a little bit more about the circumstances in which she was found as a baby. So she finds out that she was obviously found in a cot as a baby and her parents were actually found dead. So it was both of her parents and some other random man who were found dead in the kitchen and it looked to be some kind of joint suicide but it's all very mysterious and um, no one really knows what happened. So obviously she's got a lot of questions and she's trying to figure out what on earth happened um, and also she's trying to figure out what on earth she's going to do with this house that she's suddenly inherited. Like is she going to sell it and make loads of money or is she going to try and like search for clues and just trying to find out a little bit more about her past. So that's Libby. We've then got the character of Lucy who is a um, woman in her 40s. She's got two kids and she's also homeless. So she is struggling to get by in the world and it's very clear that she had a very troubled past, a very tr troubled childhood which is somehow connected to this house and also connected to Libby somehow but we don't know quite how just yet. Um, so that's Lucy. So Libby and Lucy are both uh, present day and they're both written in third person. Um, but then we've also got the perspective of Henry and Henry is actually recounting events that happened in the past. So he is recounting his childhood, he's telling his story of when he was um, a kid in the 80s when he was actually living in the house. So Henry knows what happened and he's just telling his story and he's kind of you know explaining what happened as he was growing up and when he was living in the house and all of the mysterious things that happened during that time. So yes that's Henry and his chapters are actually written in first person which is quite interesting. So yeah those are the three perspectives and we're very much jumping between the three and getting like short bursts with each character. So yes, yeah, so that just makes it feel like it's taken me a little bit of time to get invested in the characters and to actually care about them just because we're spending such a short amount of time with each character. But I'm hoping that as I read on I'll become more invested in everything in the story. Not a huge amount has happened in terms of plot. Um, so far we've just been kind of finding it out a little bit about each of the characters. There also hasn't been too much creepy content, nothing too scary has happened. So I'm actually weirdly excited for it to start to get a little bit darker and a little more, bit more twisted and creepy because then I think I'll be more hooked and more invested in this story. But yes, I am going to jump back into my book now. I'm gonna read a little bit more and um, I guess I will check in with you later. Hi 
guys so it's a little bit later on now i have just been reading for most of the evening to be fair and i'm now on page 178 so i've read quite a bit since i last spoke to you and i am starting to get a little bit more intrigued now things are starting to get a little bit more interesting for me i definitely feel like i'm enjoying libby's chapters the best because she is asking lots of questions and she's trying to uncover what on earth happened and i feel like that's the same for me as a reader like i've got lots of questions and want to know what happened so i'm enjoying her chapters and i'm enjoying kind of exploring the house because she obviously owns this house now and she's starting to look around and starting to uncover some creepy things about the house which is quite interesting so i'm starting to feel a little bit more intrigued but yeah again i mean not too much has happened just yet but yes i am um, i'm interested to see where the plot goes from here but it is now um getting on a little bit so i think i'm probably going to head to bed now get some sleep and then i will probably do some more reading tomorrow so i will check in with you then so it is Thursday today so I haven't checked in in a while I am sorry um but I thought I'd better quickly turn the camera on because I am pretty far through my book now um I can't remember what page I was on when I last spoke to you um but I am now on page 376 so I've only got this little chunk here left which I will probably finish today so I thought I'd better um switch the camera on and um, let you know my thoughts before I finish. So basically this book has been quite a surprise actually. Um, it's definitely not been what I was expecting going into a thriller. I was expecting something really gripping, something that was going to be a, re a real page turner and was going to be really fast paced. Whereas I have found this to be pretty slow. It's taken me a while to get into the story and it's taken me a while to get invested in the characters. Um, I would say that I am now intrigued. My interest has peaked. I want to know what happened and I am invested and I am enjoying it when I'm reading it, but it's definitely not been as fast paced as I was hoping for. I am definitely enjoying the character of Henry. I find his chapters really fascinating. His whole experience of growing up in the house and what happened to him and some of the other people in the house, the way that he reacts to things that happen, the relationships that he builds it's all very fascinating so i've been weirdly enjoying his chapters there's been some pretty dark stuff that's happened in here as you would expect from an adult thriller so definitely check out the content warnings i would say the main ones are probably um, sexual assault, rape and um, child abuse. There are probably more so definitely check them out before you go into this book. Nothing too too scary has happened for me. There hasn't been any jump scares or anything but perhaps that's more of a horror thing than a thriller thing. So yes, um, we're, we're getting to the bit where um, plot lines are starting to merge, things are starting to tie up now which is quite interesting. Although there have been some hints that perhaps some of the narrators might not necessarily be um, reliable which is interesting obviously I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give any spoilers but yes I think the ending of this book is going to make or break it for me you know I'm hoping that this is going to have quite a big bang ending I'm hoping that I might be quite surprised but we shall see oh I wanted to quickly mention there has also been a little bit of a romance in here which I really really wasn't expecting going into a thriller I think that's quite unusual I didn't feel like it was necessarily needed but I also don't feel like it was a bad thing I mean I like romance so I you know have been uh, enjoying it and I thought it was quite a nice surprise and certainly not something I was expecting going into this book but anyway I am going to hop back in and read the end and um, I guess I will pop on later and let you know my thoughts <laughs> So it's been a little while since I checked in with you. It's actually been a couple of weeks. 
um, because I've actually been away. I went on holiday with my family. Um, we went to Northern Ireland for a week, which was absolutely amazing. We went um, for my birthday and we did loads of walking, loads of sightseeing and just enjoyed the weather because it was really warm. We actually had like a heat wave and we saw um, temperatures that were the highest ever recorded in Northern Ireland. It was above 30 degrees, I think, every day that we were there. It was crazy warm. Um, so that was really nice. It literally felt like we were in the Mediterranean or somewhere. It was amazing. So yes, I had a lovely week with my family. I did actually film a few clips, so I might make a video, but I might not put it on this channel. I don't know. I didn't do a huge ton of reading. Um, I did start Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier which I am absolutely loving. I'm about 200 pages in now and it's, it's great. It's so beautifully written, so atmospheric, and I'm, I'm very much enjoying that one. But yeah, I'm only 200 pages in and it's quite a chunky book, so I've still got a little way to go. Um, but let me know if you want to know my thoughts on that book. Um, but anyway, I am here to talk to you about The Family Upstairs, which I finished just before I went away. So this was the first thriller novel that I've ever read. And I've got to say, it wasn't what I was expecting. So this is quite a slow paced thriller. It's definitely a slow burn. And I was certainly expecting something that was going to be a little bit more fast paced, a little bit more kind of twisty and turny. And that's not really what I got from this. This felt to me a little bit more like a family drama rather than a thriller. So yeah, not what I was expecting. The writing is quite plain, but it's very easy to fall into and I, I sailed through this pretty quickly for me. The characters were really interesting. I feel like some of the main characters, because we've got three perspectives in here, I feel like some of them were explored more than others and I would have liked a little bit more of an even exploration into the different characters, but they were well written and, and interesting. I also really enjoyed the side characters in here. I thought they were fascinating. I would have actually liked to have found out a little bit more about the side characters more so than some of the main characters because um, I just thought they were really really interesting. In terms of how scary it was I was quite nervous going in because I don't tend to read sort of thrillers or um, horror or anything like that really because I'm a bit of a wuss <laughs> um, so I was nervous going in but I don't feel like this was particularly scary. There were a lot of dark things that happened in here that were quite uncomfortable to read at times but there wasn't any jump scares it wasn't kind of keep you on the edge of your seat um kind of book it was more just very unsettling and creepy especially the ending as well i was expecting something that was going to be a big bang ending something that was going to be like whoa and have like really big twists and things at the end and i didn't get that, that from this novel there were a few twists and turns but nothing earth shattering for me <laughs> it more just left you feeling a little bit creeped out <laughs> and a little bit unsettled, I would say, at the end of this book. It also left quite a few open endings, like everything wasn't completely wrapped up at the end of this book, and I definitely think she left space for a sequel. It definitely felt like it set up for another book. So I don't know whether Lisa Jewell has written a sequel to this book or not, but that's definitely what it felt like at the end of here. I would say, in terms of the story, it was interesting. Um, it took me a while to get into, but I was invested, you know, by the time I got about halfway through, I was quite invested and interested to find out what happens. Um, but it didn't play out as I was expecting. Um, I was uh, expecting there to be lots of twists and turns and for, the, um, for there to be a lot of opportunities for me to kind of guess what happened and to try and piece together clues. And that's not what it felt like for me in this book. This book kind of tells you what happens um, gradually throughout the story. So you get um, snippets of what happened in the house and you kind of piece them together as you work through the book. So it's literally kind of directly told to you through the perspective of, of one of the narrators what happened in the house. Um, so yeah, I felt like I was missing opportunities to make those guesses and to try and figure out what was going on because as I say it was literally just kind of laid out for you. But I would say Without wanting to spoil anything, there may or may not be some questionable narrators in here, which did add an interesting element to the story. And looking back, um, it's quite interesting 
um, sort of reflecting on the story in the way that it was told to you. So that did add an interesting element in here. But yeah, overall, I think this probably isn't a great book to start with if you're looking to, to get into the thriller genre, just because I don't think it was a particularly stereotypical thriller in that it was slow and for all the reasons that I've kind of said, and it doesn't have that big bang ending or loads and loads of twists or anything. So yeah, I feel like it would have been good to know that going in. <laughs> but I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, I probably will pick up some more of Lisa Jewell's novels. I mean, I have got The Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell, so I feel like I may as well read this because they, they're quite quick and easy to get through. And it is quite a palette cleanser. It's very different from the kinds of books that I normally read. Um, so I probably will pick up some more of her work, but I'm not rushing to sort of read all of her novels or anything. I wouldn't say that she is a new favorite author or anything, but yes, those are kind of my thoughts really. Um, I feel like I've rambled quite a lot so I don't know how much of that's going to make any sense but I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed filming it and um, please do stick around if you would like to see some more content from me. I did actually get some books for my birthday this year um, so I might film a little haul video so if you're interested to see what I got then stick around and keep an eye out for that video. But thank you so much for watching this far and for supporting my little channel and I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you next time with another video. Bye!